We talked about the Lytro camera, and that's a well-known consumer plenoptic or light field camera. How much if somebody wanted one of these? How much are these? Oh, uh, off eBay, I think. I don't know if I should say off eBay. No, you can say that. Yeah. yeah. I saw them for hundred pounds on eBay. Um, I, I was very tempted actually because I'm not allowed to take this one home. So these aren't the only other cameras, though, are they? So there's another company called Raytrix who are pretty prominent in light field. They're more focused on industrial cameras. What sort of uses would an industry have for this sort of thing? Though? To answer that question, I should probably tell you a little bit about how the Raytrix differs from this. So first of all, a Raytrix camera is much higher resolution. It's much more expensive, but it's much higher resolution. Okay, um, you can you can obtain 11 megapixel images um, with all this other inf array information. Okay, but also the approach of Raytrix is slightly more pragmatic. So they don't necessarily model all the rays going into the camera and worry about the mathematics of, of how you would reconstruct focus and things like this. What they're really interested in doing is very quickly obtaining a depth map of the scene. So people familiar with Microsoft Connect will know that depth sensors are quite big at the moment. So instead of just taking a normal picture, you take a picture and you also get a, a value for every pixel of how far away it is. Now the problem with Connect is it runs on IR, so it can't be used outside and it's fairly low resolution. What's, uh, oh, infrared, right. Infrared, okay. sorry, yeah. I mean, it's very good for skeletal tracking and, and gameplay, but if you want to use it to reconstruct a rice plant, it, that's not what it was designed for. You can give it a go, but it's not what it's designed for. So the Raytrix is a hardware-based approach that tries to reconstruct depth and high-resolution images really, really quickly. So this Lytra cam will take a picture and my computer will chug away for a minute or two and I'll have a really nice picture at the end. The Raytrix, using a GPU machine, will do this in fractions of a second, okay, because it's designed that way. So Raytrix cameras are subtly different, but pretty similar. They still have a main lens and a CCD, and they still have micro lenses in front, okay? Raytrix have a hexagonal micro lens array, so there's slightly less wasted space, but it's, it's minor, okay? Rays come in on a, on a Raytrix, but instead of being focused onto each micro lens, they're focused behind, okay? So they just come in like this and hit a bunch of micro lenses. And then some of these micro lenses will focus into focus and some will focus nearly in focus and they have different focuses. So there's three different focuses. And Raytrix approached this problem very much as a each micro lens views the scene from a different angle. What can we do with that? And what they can do is a process called stereo correspondence or stereo matching which is a topic for another video but essentially what feature points can we find in one micro lens but also in our neighbouring micro lenses to give us an idea of what the depth of the scene is. Because if you close one eye and when you open the other eye, you can see your view shift. And we use that to sort of triangulate how far away things are. Um, and that's what they're doing here. And they do it very, very fast using graphics cards. So what a Raytrix camera will do is um, produce a depth map of the scene, so how far away is everything, and a colour image, and it will do it at, you know, multiple frames per second. Um, so you can stream video in it, or you can do sort of quick tasks of image processing. So a few examples that they show um, we'll, we'll put a link to their website in the, uh, in the comments so that you can see the kind of stuff they do. But they'll do things like industrial component um, testing. So they'll look at a very small industrial component and because they've got a depth map they can make sure it's been manufactured to the right tolerances. Okay? This camera's all been calibrated so they know what the depth map is in, in real world millimetres. Um, in terms of sort of plant sciences where I am, you can imagine that a depth map of a plant will give you a good idea of what shape that plant is. And that's useful for all kinds of modelling applications or, or plant phenotyping, which is the idea of um, extracting traits from plants and working out which is better than another plant. And you know, maybe trying to cre create more drought resistant crops or something like that. Those are just a couple of examples. Loads more things you could use it for. If anyone wants to buy me one, you know, I'll, I'll put it to good use. Uh, <laughs> this costs, you know, £100 now a few hundred dollars, essentially. A Raytrix cam will be in the tens of thousands of euros, but it's a very different problem being solved. Um, so, something for everyone. For example, here's the table, here's the floor. Well, which bits of the floor and which bits of this table can I see? You don't really care about focusing. This doesn't have a focus knob on it or any kind of autofocus.